So today I want to share with you about ZocDoc and whether or not as a therapist in private practice, it would be a helpful resource for you. I recently signed up myself and so I want to share with you the experience of what it was like to onboard with them as well as some of the benefits and some of the pros and cons so that by the end of this video, you can decide whether or not you would like to sign up for ZocDoc and whether or not it would be a helpful resource for your practice. However, before we dive in, if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe down below. Hit the thumbs up button on this video. Only if you want to though, there is no pressure. So before I actually dive into ZocDoc and what it's all about, I wanna share with you the private practice framework that I'm often thinking about. And now I wrote an article about this and there's a video about it. I'll link those down below. But just to put it simply, resources and tools like ZocDoc or things like Alma, Headway, your EHR, Simple Practice, these are tools for your private practice. So what you really wanna think about is your private practice, what your goals are, and then what tools you need to achieve those goals. And so we want to think about ZocDoc the same way. ZocDoc is simply another tool that you can use to help your private practice grow if that's something you want to do. All right, so that's the framework. So keep that in mind as we go through the rest of this video. All right, so for those of you who do not know, a ZocDoc is essentially a database or a directory of different providers. There's doctors on there, there's therapists, and there's some other providers. And so if you go to ZocDoc.com, you can look for different providers, filter through insurance, filter through specialty, and often you can book right on ZocDoc's platform with that provider. So it makes the whole process of finding and scheduling with a provider very, very simple. So that's what ZocDoc provides to the consumers, to people who are visiting ZocDoc.com. But what about for the providers? So the biggest draw for a therapist is that if your practice is listed on ZocDoc, it has the potential to be in front of the eyes of many therapy seekers. And now one side note here, and this is a personal theory of mine, if you're looking to grow a therapy practice and get more clients and more referrals, you do want to put your practice in front of as many eyes as possible. And not just any eyes, but you want to put your practice in front of as many therapy seekers as possible. Now it's never a guarantee. Not even Google ads are going to be a golden ticket. There's so many factors that go into practice growth, whether it be website design or your niche, your specialty, your working hours, whether or not you take insurance. So there's a lot of other factors. However, a very simple rule of thumb is that if you can get your practice in front of as many eyes as possible, well then your potential for growth is going to increase. Now a couple of other things that ZocDoc is going to provide a therapist is they're going to provide you with an online booking tool. So for example, if you have a website and a client visits that website with ZocDoc's integration, they can see your schedule and book right on there. They're also going to offer online intake packets, which is essentially you upload your practice documents into ZocDoc and then you have an an easy way to send them to a client and a client can electronically sign for them. So the next question is how much does ZocDoc cost as a provider? And so ZocDoc is going to tell you that it's free, right? So access to their tools, whether it be the online scheduling or the intake packet or even being listed on their directory, it's free. However, they charge per booking. So for example, if a client sees you listed on ZocDoc and books with you, then you as the practice or the provider is charged a fee. Now this is going to vary depending on the state you're from, I believe, but it can be upwards of $70, maybe even more per booking. Now that might sound like a lot, and we'll talk about that in just a second, but you have to know that if a client books with you on ZocDoc, you are charged that fee, whether or not that client cancels or reschedules or never shows up, it doesn't matter. You are charged the fee simply for the booking. Now, it might sound like a pretty high cost, especially if you're charged even if clients don't show up. I mean, different platforms like Psychology Today or Alma, they don't have this model where it's like a, you're charged per booking. ZocDoc is one of the only places I know at the moment that's like that. So it might seem a little different or even a little scary or like, wow, that's a lot for nothing that's guaranteed. But that's more closely related to like an ad model, right? So if you think about Google ads, if you put a Google ad out onto the internet, you're getting charged for every time someone clicks it, whether or not they book. And in ZocDoc, it's gonna be the same. Now that being said, if you wanna decide whether or not it's worth it for you to use ZocDoc, considering the cost, you do have to do a couple things. First, you have to give it some time. You have to actually try ZocDoc to see if the referrals you get are consistent referrals. So from there, once you decide what types of referrals generally come from ZocDoc, whether or not they stick, you can then decide if the cost per booking is worth it for you by doing some simple math. You would 
basically take a period of time and look at how much you were charged on ZocDoc, right? So how many times did someone book with you regardless of canceling? How much did you pay ZocDoc for their service? And then you would see how much you generated from the referrals that came from ZocDoc and you would have to decide is the cost worth it or not, right? So that's two parts, collecting the data and then doing the simple math and then deciding from there. And so it's not a straightforward answer. You know, if ZocDoc works for me, it might not work for you. I mean, just because you're listed on ZocDoc doesn't mean you're guaranteed success. This is why it's worth it to at least give it a shot, see if it works for you, see what kind of clients come in for you. One of the traps that people fall into, and this happens because we're sold a lot of things in private practice. We think that because we sign up for one service, then this is going to be like the golden ticket. I'm always going to get referrals from here. You know, whether that be Psychology Today, Alma, ZocDoc, but there really is no golden ticket because there's so many other factors. Like I mentioned before, website design, what's written on your website, your specialty, all these kinds of things are going to contribute to the success of getting more referrals. Now, I also know people are usually fearful of ZocDoc because of the reviews, right? As therapists, we often dread reviews, right? That's because we're thinking about negative reviews. What if I get a one-star review? You know, can it ruin my entire practice? Now, at the end of the day, I do understand that reviews are quite scary. Getting a negative review can be bad. It can be detrimental. However, it's usually not so black and white and so extreme. At the end of the day, reviews are just a part of marketing nowadays. I mean, think about when you go to a restaurant, if you're going on Yelp or something like that, and you go to a restaurant and it has you know, tons of reviews, mostly good, it's pretty favorable, right? Or what if you go and look on Yelp and you see a restaurant that has no reviews? I don't know about you, but I typically scroll past it and at least find one that has some reviews so that I can read about people's experience, right? So there's something about having no reviews that seems a little bit strange. At the same time, we're all very scared of very bad reviews and what that might happen. But again, if we think about marketing as a game, this is part of the game. We can choose to not play, but our chances of success are not gonna be as high. But if we do play the game, we'll find that our chances of success are higher. Now, when it comes to reviews, again, it's not black and white, I just get good, I just get bad, or it's gonna ruin my practice. But nowadays, there's so many ways to think about reviews and even manage them. So there's ways to mitigate the risk of bad reviews. Um, There's strategies for overcoming a bad review. And even now, right, we're talking a lot about bad reviews. But what about all the good reviews that you could get, right? So there's also that potential as well, which could really, really help you. Not to mention really good reviews can help outweigh or adjust the bad reviews that you might get, right? Again, it's all a risk. I understand that but it's part of the game of marketing. And I think playing is gonna be more effective than sitting out. So once you sign up for ZocDoc, what they will tell you is that providers with reviews are more likely to get booked than providers without. So they're actually gonna encourage you to get reviews. But I guess the encouragement in this video is to not be so scared, but think about it as part of the game. And so let's say you wanna sign up for ZocDoc. What does the onboarding process actually look like? And since I just did that, let me actually walk you through what that is. And so the first step is gonna be to go on their website and you'll see a button for contact them. You'll contact them and say that you're interested. And within, usually, for me, it was like, I think minutes, maybe a couple hours, uh, someone got back to me. It was an onboarding specialist and I scheduled a video call with them, which lasted about 10 or 15 minutes. They, They shared with me a little bit about ZocDoc and what it's all about, introduced me to the tools. And then from there, I spent time on my own building out the profiles for people. Oh yes, you can also use ZocDoc for a group practice. And so that's what I did. So I spent time building out profiles for my providers. If it's just you, you would build out the profile for yourself. Uh, This takes, you know, because it's like other profiles you probably have, Psychology Today, your website, it's not that difficult. It's pretty much the same, you know, about section, uh, a bio, what insurance do you take, what are your specialties? So you'll take time to build that out. That might take, I don't know, anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour or two. Um, And then you'll actually have another call with the onboarding specialist to review your profile, to make sure you know how to navigate their system. And then if you decide to use their booking tool on your website, that's something I also did, then they'll connect you with an integration specialist. That call was about 10 minutes. The integration specialist helped me integrate my simple practice calendar with ZocDoc and made sure that was up and running. And then after that, I was pretty much ready to go. The onboarding specialist wanted to do one final walkthrough with me to go through a test client to make sure everything was running. That was another 10 minutes or so. And from there, I went live and we were ready to go. And then I'm fairly new to it, so I will keep people updated 
on the results, whether or not it was worth it for my practice, but right now I am just collecting data. Anyway, I hope this video is helpful for you. I hope you learned something. At the very least, I hope you're inspired to thrive in your private practice. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you soon.